Incoming transmission. Greetings, everybody. Irish Trekkie back with another Eagle Moss Hero Collector Star Trek Online Starships review. This time we have issue number four. We're having a little bit of Klingon love with the IKS Bortescu, this big green beastie. Um, very much looking forward to unpacking this. Big shout out to Hero Collector Eagle Moss. And a massive shout out to you folks. You make these videos possible. Uh, so I hope I do you justice and you enjoy this content. Do check out the Doodly Doo for all of the previous content that's uploaded. And if you're new to the channel, maybe hit that subscribe button as well to stay in the know with uh, what is coming your way as well. So let's get straight into it. We're going to unbox this. We're going to check out the magazine. Um, I'm going to give away the code uh, for the Zen store on Star Trek Online in here as well. So stay tuned a little bit later on in the video for that. So first come, first serve. Um, so yeah, let's jump straight into unboxing this. The code is in the box. We'll leave it in the box. <laughs> we have our magazine. And uh, let's get an initial reaction here to, ooh, she's big. Ooh, she's heavy. Die cast. A little bit of plastic on it there as well. Wow, yeah, she's nice. I'm not gonna drop this one like the Andromeda. <laughs> uh, wow. This is a phenomenal Klingon ship at first impressions. Put that to one side. We have a pretty substantial base here. And uh, the mount, I mean, the base is 2895A slash A. Uh, Bortescu. So let's clear up all of this. Check out this. We compare it to her, her compart, her, I was going to say, I've lost the, the words in my head. Uh, we're going to compare her to her counterpart in um, the TNG D Space Nine Voyager era. And um, we'll have a look at the magazine and kind of do some final thoughts and wrap ups there. So here we have the Bortescu. Love it. It's a little bit greener in the video here because I just have such a, a powerful light above it, but it still is a lovely rich green. Uh, there you have the front powerhouse and showing you the scale of the ship and the rows and rows of windows. You kind of bridge command center there. Very, very strong neck on that. Ventral section is very nice as well. There's detailing everywhere. You have your very atypical Klingon feather motif. Plastic inserts for those gigantic and populated nacelles. Massive impulse section as well. You can see your seam in there. A little bit kind of playing along here, but I'm only nitpicking. Love the kind of the grills on the impulse section there as well. Little warp nacelles up here as well. That's pretty cool. I'm just I kind of I'm just soaking up all the detailer. <laughs> you can see again windows all over the ship. Just shows you the massive scale on that. That actually could be the bridge up here as well, or secondary bridge. Man, she looks violent. Uh, what a beast, though. Like, I'm going to be comparing this to the, the Negvar um, that we saw in D Space Nine. But uh, I wasn't very best impressed with that model at the time. And uh, this one completely puts it to shame. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. I love this model. It's one of my favorite Klingon models so far. Great design. Let's see what she's like on the stand. And uh, we compare it to the Nigra, just kind of get a sense of uh, aesthetic and size as well. So there she is on the stand. Uh, very, very stable. Um, it's a very large mount. Uh, clips into the uh, pylons, which are very thick in themselves as well. So it's aft mounted, all the weight's coming right down there, but it gives that nice overhang on the base. Now that's very kind of typical for the Klingon ships anyway as well. So it's nice to see that carried through. Lovely ship though. Love all of the plastic inserts for the nacelles, 
There's no sculpting on the windows, so the alignment isn't an issue there as well. But the little details down to the Klingon uh, pennants, the little nacelle detail in the whole skull paint apps, it's a win on all counts. Um, I'm gonna show you kind of the opposite to that because again, the Navar wasn't a great model at the time. Um, you can't hit a home run on every ship, but uh, let me show you. So here we have the Bortescu and the Navar. Bortescu is a good bit bigger in both, you know, mass and length as well, but the color is far, far better on the Bortescu than they are. It looks so washed out on the Navar. Now the Navar is a lovely designed ship, but you know, there's gaps on the underside of the, the pylons and the detail just wasn't really there, uh, to be honest with you. Some of it looked a little bit washed out, kind of rudimentary graphics, kind of block graphics and stuff like that as well. Now, not a complete failure, but um, this is just streets ahead. The Bordescu is uh, an amazing model. Um, so well done, you, you got a home run here, not so much over there. Uh, but you can kind of see the, the whole vibe, the whole Klingon vibe, I think it was honored very, very well um, on this. And again, like all these little talons and angles, you can kind of see the evolution off of there as well. Very curious to know what you folks think of uh, both ships. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, so let's have a look at the magazine and uh, we'll wrap up with some final thoughts then. So folks, here we have the magazine. This is the flagship uh, for the Klingon Empire. Um, and its length is Klingon and its roll is 1,126 1, meters. A little bit of a quality control issue there. Fabulous graphic though on the front. And then we have a nice little graphic on the back. So let's check out what goodies lay inside this issue very glossy interior. So we have our introduction, Starship Profile, we have our orthos, designing the Bortescu, and uh, we have Star Trek lore, Captain Karen, and the in-game stats. Mounting instructions and some close-up uh, beauty shots. So, the IKS, IKS Bortescu. Uh, at the dawn of the 25th century, the Klingon Empire created a battle cruiser to match the power of Starfleet's new enterprise. Star Trek Online had a new flagship. Revealed to the players in the summer of 2011, the USS Enterprise NCC-1701F would appear in game, uh, wouldn't appear in game until the next year. The game development team needed time to determine how to best uh, launch the ship in context to the Star Trek Online story. Uh, but more than that, the Enterprise needed a counterpart. Exactly, you need a balance of power here. And this is the big beastie that uh, delivered on that. Uh, mission statement uh, we have a lot of content in here so far which is awesome i love the the background into it as well and some nice shots not going to go through that in too much detail i'll let you folks enjoy that contents uh crew of 2800 so when we were looking at the andromeda recently that had a crew of 830 so phenomenal okay, phenomenal size and again captained by karen house of Martok. Uh, warp nacelles, um, oh look at that, docked uh, bird of prey on the aft section of it as well, that's awesome. Um, I love those, and again on the Enterprise F in game, you had a, well depending on the variant of the ship you got, uh, you had a detachable uh, auxiliary craft there as well. Uh, gunnery tower, main bridge, heavy disruptor cannon, battery, all the good stuff. Um, so again, here's a little bit on the bird of prey. Uh, the Hosus class, is that how you say it? The heavy cruiser um, is often, so this heavy raider is often deployed as an advanced scout, as a diversion tactic, or as a secondary attack platform to assault the enemy. Uh, so, really cool. So designing, now that Star Trek Online had its own version of the Enterprise, it was time for the Klingons to get a flagship of their own. So you can see the iterative design here, some of the concept art, which is awesome. Um, that's pretty nifty. Kind of like that one actually as well. It's kind of massive opened uh, mouth like it's going to devour you. So uh, yeah, there's a lot in here again. So the ship artist Adam Williams, 
was uh, basically focused on um, the build for the final in-game model as well. So some great talent in Star Trek Online actually. Got to meet a few of them back in the day when there was conventions. Uh, DST Birmingham, she's 2019, feels like uh, uh, so long ago. And here we have a little bit of lore on Captain Corrin. House of Martok, least we forget. And uh, yeah, so some good, some good universe building in here. And again, for you stat fanatics out there, this is a war cruiser, tier five, not tier six, but so tier five. Hull strength of 4350, so she's a big beastie, but not, not up there with the tier sixes. Turn rate 5.5, .5, inertia rate 18. You have a uh, plus 10 to power and engines, uh, weapon and engines power, four device slots, uh, four aft for four weapons. And then you have a commander slot, uh, engineer science, and two additional uh, ta well, tactical commander slots. Uh, four tactical, five science, uh, one engineering. And uh, again, the console power is your bird of prey. No starship mastery or specialization. Um, coming up soon, we have the USS Buran. So that's gonna be an awesome ship. And uh, we're gonna close out there on the back graphic if it's not too shiny. Uh, so let's wrap up the video and uh, share our final thoughts, shall we? Hold the phone, almost forgot <laughs> about the, the code. Uh, so listen, this uh, basically gives you 50% uh, off any tier six listed uh, ship listed in the Star Trek uh, online Zen store. Um, so it's only PC only, sorry about that. So listen, first come first serve. There's the code there, so uh, run free and snag a deal on the Zen store for your fine selves. Uh, hope you enjoy. So folks, um, yeah, listen, checking out the magazine. Um, congratulations to whoever got the code, by the way. Um, and the overall model that we have here as well, this is an awesome addition to the collection. Um, so far, I know we're only at issue four here, but the Star Trek Online collection is freaking awesome very interesting designs yes and i know maybe the star trek online ships maybe aren't to everyone's taste but uh the craftsmanship and detail on these models are phenomenal so again you know you can definitely see how hero collector is working with the studios uh on this and because you know it is a massive multiplayer online game that kind of digital content and archive is accessible there to take full advantage of you know, Ben has often spoken about the, the challenges of doing the research and getting the original files and references on some of the more uh, bespoke ships that are in the Star Trek collection as well. But, um, you know, doesn't appear to be the issue here. Anyway, um, we'll wrap it up there for today's video. Um, again, folks, you make these videos possible, um, especially the Patreons. Uh, your support is absolutely amazing. Uh, so thank you very much month to month and um yeah you're all legends so i continue to do my very best free um, if you're new to the channel do check out the doobly doo down below it has all the playlists and details and links to hero collector and sundry uh for um the well it's i'm losing my brain here <laughs> so do check out the description box below for all of the details for all of the playlists uh, social media links as well as uh, the uh, hero collector and Star Trek online um, platforms and portals as well um, listen we'll wrap it up there thanks for taking the time out of your day to stop by and check out the video uh, stay happy stay healthy stay sane and uh, stay tuned for more Star Trek online videos coming to you very soon I've been your local Irish Trekkie and I will see you in the next video take it easy and goodbye